G'day guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com uh, where I look at like boots and apparel that's built to last. Uh, and I'm here with the lovely Tito Blanco of the terrific, very famous and influential Instagram Tito Blanco Shoes and also co-host of the Stitch Down podcast and also just general uh, a boot entrepreneur and wheeler and dealer and person connector and he tends to know everyone and everything in the industry and it's a great pleasure to have him here for those reasons. Hi teacher. What's up man? Yeah, it just says shoe man on my business card. Today, we're talking about Chinese boots because uh, you know that whole philosophy of Chinese made goods being subpar is a very 20th century ideology and today there are just stupendous things coming out of China. Um, you are probably aware of like, you know, the Italian footwear industry, you might be aware of the Indonesian footwear industry. Very few people talk about the Chinese one, at least not in a positive light, but the reputation is growing and, and building and slowly but surely people, even really, really finicky aficionados uh, of footwear, the kind of guys who obsess over like stitch density and build quality and this kind of stuff, even those guys are conceding uh, that there are some really good quality things coming out of China. That's absolutely right, man. You know, for for so long, we've kind of heard, you know, oh, something's made in China. It kind of has this, you know, kind of meaning of it, it's a lower quality or inferior or, you know, it's cheap. Um, and there are right now a lot of guys in China who are trying to change that perception. And they are, you know, striving to make the best quality boots in the entire world. Um, and I believe that some of them are, are getting close to achieving that. Um, so it's both on, on, on the dress shoe end has kind of come up uh, a little bit first, uh, but what we're gonna be talking about is more on the boot side of it. And um, I've been spending a ton of time talking to these guys, um, you know, getting to know what's going on over there, figuring it out. And, you know, I think I've, I've, I've found some interesting uh, workshops, interesting factories there. Uh, I've started working with some of them to, you know, bring their products over here, you know, get them kind of marketed appropriately to people in the West, people who are, you know, interested in this stuff with, you know, who might listen to my podcast, watch your videos, uh, you know, follow us on Instagram and, you know, and, and just kind of make it a lot easier for, for these guys to, to, to buy these things. Um, Cause there's a lot of guys that are there that have, you know, a very unique perspective. They have their own design philosophies. They have their own design aesthetics and, you know, they're, they're proving that they, they belong, you know, on the world stage in the global market. So, uh, I'm really excited about a lot of what's going on in China, and I brought, uh, I filled up the trunk of my car with boots and drove, uh, you know, still in New Jersey where I live, uh, which is great. Glad to be doing this in New Jersey. And um, yeah, should we take a look Let's at some of them? Let's do it. I'm excited Let's to learn. It. We have we have no script or plan or anything, so I'm I'm learning this along with you guys. Uh, what's what's the first one you want to show us? So I'll start out with. Um, ooh, I got such a good pile here. Should we start with Grand Stone? That's like the first let's, to ease people in. Let's ease people in. Grand Stone, that's a brand a lot of people are familiar with. All right, show us um, your Grand Stone boots. So I got some Grand Stones here. This is- I, I wore some Grand Stone boots uh, today as well. Um, so these, you know, these, here we go. We got Grand Stones. So this is, what I've got here are uh, uh, my kangaroo leather boots. Very, mm. very cool. This is natural kangaroo leather. Uh, and this, what is this, a diesel boot? This is a diesel boot in the, uh, it's a Seidel Bison leather. Very cool. Um, so it's a super heavyweight, nice American tanned leather. Yeah, um, Grant Stone is yeah. the only company I know anything about here. I've actually interviewed their founder before, and this is this is like a gateway drug into Chinese boots in that it's an American yeah. owned company. Right. Uh, so what, what are they, it's not, not Michigan, where are they? Michigan, yeah. It is Michigan? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're in Michigan. Wyatt has, I'll, I'll link a, an interview I did with him, the guy who founded the company. He has like a really long family history of making shoes. Uh, like his like dad and I think his grandpa as well were affiliated with a variety of uh, well-known and beloved. His, uh, his grandfather is like a shoe industry legend mm -hmm. who worked for Alden Shoes for like a billion years. Like yeah. He worked there forever. His dad worked there and then sometime in like the 80s or 90s moved over to China, started working with this factory that was, you know, producing, you know, probably some of the highest quality at that time, definitely the highest quality stuff coming out of China. And, you know, they've, you know, spent the last couple of decades kind of refining these designs, working with this factory. Wyatt himself lived in China for a period mm. of time, which I'm sure you probably talked about in your interview. Mm. And I did as well, actually, fun fact. You live in China. Two years in Shanghai, yeah. Oh, right on, man. Yeah. Nice. Ni hao, man. Right on. Right on. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I mean, they've come over here, they've made, you know, a great impression on US consumers. And I think they've kind of been, you know, the vanguard of this whole thing, kind of mm. driving interest in, in made in China, high quality boots. You know, they've worked with, um, you know, some really high quality tanneries, high quality leathers, and kind of introduced this idea that, you know, you can, you know, you can have something that's made in China, but it's gonna be, you know, of the top quality, um, you know, that you're seeing, and it's gonna be an incredible value. Um, so they, they've done a great job of kind of introducing this idea and changing the perspective of people about made in China stuff. I love Grand Stones. I lived, lived in a pair of Grand Stone suede loafers this summer. Uh, I got hit by a car wearing them <laughs> and they were like totally fine. I actually wore my Grand Stone loafers all over Italy as well and, and England. And, and that's like, yeah, that was like my main pair of footwear that I wore, uh, the, the Chrome XL ones. What's interesting about Grand Stone is, um, I know I said at the beginning I know nothing about any of the brands in this video. This is the only one I do know anything about, but I happen to know a lot about it. But what's interesting about Grand Stone is like they are, they are made in China, um, but like the only Chinese material in them is the box they come in. Like, you know, like so, for, so to take these, for example, this is, a, so it's kangaroo leather, um, which I guess it's from Australia, but it was tanned in Italy. Uh, but like the, I think like the lining is from Milwaukee and like the, 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 I, I can't remember what the other ones are, but like there's like, I'll, I'll put on the screen, like, cause I've spoken to, uh, to Wyatt and he's like, this is from Milwaukee and this is from Wyoming and this is from Italy and this is from this and this and this. And like the only places, yeah, the only Chinese made products in the whole thing is, uh, is, is the box itself, which isn't to say there's anything wrong with stuff that is made that is from, from China. Um, but I think maybe he did that to, to make it easier for people uh, to accept it. And also just, yeah, to convince people that like, they really are using the best quality uh, components in the right. world. Like this suede is from, if you know anything about suede, you probably think of CF Stead, like the most celebrated suede tannery. Uh, the, the, the suede stuff is from there, right? This is from Mariam Tannery in Italy, like very celebrated tannery. Uh, this is from Seidel, this is, you said Bison Leather, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so very, very, very celebrated in that regard. Um, so you really can trust it. It is, and, and what people tend to say about Grant Stone is that like their boots, uh, you know, they, they, on average about 350 bucks. And in their, if they were made in America, that'd be a good 550, 650. Easily, easily yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So at least 550 bucks if, if they were made in America. But how can I try, if I, how can I trust that like, it's not being made in some sweatshop by children? I mean, look, you're, you know, you can kind of look at the end product, right? And, you know, you've made shoes, you've been to a shoe factory before. This isn't easy. It's not easy to make something that looks like this, especially something that has worked this clean, that, ha you know, the stitching's this neat. You know, this is obviously a boot that's made by incredibly skilled people, right? And, you know, China has a pretty, you know, well-developed labor pool for people that can work at these kind of factories at this point, where, you know, if you were, working in substandard conditions, you can just go and work at one of these other factories, right? I mean, it's it, it's not that hard to do that. So, you know, you could see from the end result, it's not it's not being made in, in poor conditions. It's, you know, uh, someone with the skill to make this is in demand, is being paid well, is, is you know, uh, ho hopefully living a very nice life over there. Um, we should move on to another brand, but uh, yeah, Grand Stone, that's, it's, it's, just, it's just very easy to say yes to Grand Stone. Yeah. And also, uh, they're, they're much easier to buy. A lot of these other things, yeah. they're, they're very hard to buy. So what right. we're kind of trying to do here is give you like a, from, from here on now, give you like a preview of some brands that you should know about that we are trying to build up. And our teacher was doing his best to make it easier to order their stuff. These are brands that we probably gonna be prevalent in the future. In a few years, you'll look back at this video and be like, ah, so they made it. Yeah, I mean, it. yeah, as you said, pretty easy to buy these when, you know, as a, right, as a shoe man, everybody kind of know in my life, kind of knows I'm like the shoe guy, right? So it's like everybody's uncle, cousin, whoever is always asking me, well, what shoes should I buy? What should I do? And the number one brand that I recommend to people is Grand Stone. Mm -hmm. It's easy to understand, easy to buy. The quality is going to be exceptional for, for the value. Yes. Um, so love Grand Stone. Grand Stone is very cool. Let's get weirder. Let's see some other All right, brands. Let's get a little weirder. We're now going to go to a brand that, you know, full disclosure, I, I work with these guys. I'm, you know, I found them on Instagram. It's called XBXS Boot Factory. You can go to their Instagram. There's also like XBXS USA or something like that. Uh, it's another Instagram. I should probably know that. Um, I found these guys on Instagram. I love just digging through Instagram for like weird small boot makers. And, you know, preferably if they have like, you know, I think I found these guys, they had like 40 followers on Instagram. 
and I hit him up, was like, hey, how can I buy these boots? You know, like they're putting out these really nice, um, you know, really nice kind of military boots. Um, I'm like these are very in line with a lot of the styles that, you know, I'm interested in, people are, you know, are interested in. And I hit him up and I was like, hey, you know, how can I buy these? How much do they cost? He was like, yeah, it's like, bring them up. let's bring them up. Okay, we'll bring them up. <laughs> so here we go. So these guys, this is a, a sample pair that I had made. Um, so I had control over a lot of the specs on these. It is a brown chrome XL. I believe they call it the land boot. It's a double row stitch down. Uh, it's on the 00, 001 last, which is kind of a sleeker almond toe last. Um, got the Dr. Soul 1220 full soles, which I really like. I've been mm. using these on pretty much everything that I make because I like it is super sleek, but it's got like way better grip than like day night, for example. It's kind yeah. of a, a, you know, a comparable uh, sole that you would see on a lot of stuff. So I hit these guys up and they were like, yeah, we can, you know, we can make you a pair. You got, you got pays through like WePay or whatever, which is like Chinese PayPal. Mm. And I was like, look, like I, I'm not doing that. I'm not signing <laughs> up for that. I'm, you know, you gotta, you gotta meet me halfway, man. Like get, get a PayPal or something. And he did, he got a PayPal, he's got that set up. And so to this point he's been taking, uh, and I was his first customer in the US. Hmm. So he had never shipped a pair of boots to the US except through, um, you know, like white label stuff that he had done for other brands. And, um, but this was, you know, the first pair of, of XBXS boots that he had, you know, shipped over here. Is this the guy in Guangzhou? He is in uh, Dongguan, mm. which is uh, right next to Guangzhou. Got it. Um, what is, so what, what stands out about this? So I got these things and, you know, immediately hit them up and was like, make me more, right? You know, because when you find a, a, a place like this, and we'll talk about Flame Panda a little bit later on, when I find a place like this, I know that as soon as I start posting stuff that is of this quality, that is, you know, the stitching is this neat, the SPI is is, is pretty spot on. Stitch is uh, orange. It's gonna be, you know, a situation where a lot of people are gonna start ordering it and then it's gonna be hard for me to get them because then it's like, there's gonna be like this huge wait list, right? Because mm -hmm. um, they get really backed up. What's nice about this place, it's a larger operation. They can make more pairs. And after I started, Kind of talking to the guy, I said, look, man, like you got something here. Like you have the ability to make some extremely high quality boots. Your, you know, your, I'll say your design aesthetic needs a little help, needs a little work to be a little less derivative of other, other brands. Uh, he explained to me, you know, in the Chinese market, which is a little different than the market here, that's kind of what people are looking for. They want stuff that is very close to, you know, brands that are popular in the West. And I said, look, that's not, that's not gonna fly here. That's not what people are looking for. People want a unique perspective. They want you to have your own voice and, and communicate it through these boots. Like, don't tell somebody else's story. Mm. And he was very receptive to that. He's been, you know, willing to work with me on, on making, making the designs a little bit more unique. He's been, if you've been following on Instagram, you've seen him kind of working on that the last month, couple months. And, um, you know, we're reaching the point where, you know, we're gonna basically have him send, send me stock here It'll be at a warehouse, probably in New Jersey, because New Jersey is the greatest place on earth. And it's close to my house, uh, which is also so the yeah. real reason. Yeah, I like it well. And, um, you know, so that way people, instead of having to DM this guy on Instagram and like pay him through WePay or like whatever, can just go on a Shopify website, purchase these, it'll ship from the US. You'll be able to do returns, exchanges. I'll have QC'd every single boot. My QC is, level is really high. I'm super uh, picky about stuff uh, that I sell other people. I'm less picky about it for myself, um, but I, I have really high standards. I, you know, people, people who know me know I, I send a lot of boots back. Mm. So XBXS, how much is a pair of boots going to cost? These are going to be uh, $5.99. So. For a double row stitch down, you know, really high quality inputs, five millimeter veg tan insole, the Dr. Soul outsoles, you know, a lot of time in the finishing room to make sure that they are, you know, spot on, that they're perfect, um, you know, and then to be able to offer it at a, what I think is a pretty fair price, I, I feel good about. So. And if they were made in America, how much would they cost? I couldn't even tell you because that doesn't exist. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I looked around everywhere. I'll talk a, a little bit about, um, you know, one of the, some of the other projects that I've done. I looked everywhere, man, to, to find somewhere 
locally that could do double row stitch down cleanly at volume. Um, I looked in Europe, I looked everywhere, everywhere. Central America, I feel everywhere. like people would instinctively compare this to Vibag with right. a double row stitch down. Mm -hmm. uh, Vibag's costing these days about 780 to $90. Let's we'll say 800. Um, what do you think, like 800 if it was, if it was made in, uh, in North America? I guess, I guess that's pretty fair. I mean, you know, everything is kind of a product of where it's made, right? It's, you know, how expensive is it to, you know, import this leather, you know? It actually, in some ways, could be a little easier. These guys pay huge tariffs on importing leather from the U.S. So, you know, I, I went to uh, Jun, who's the guy who runs it, and I was like, look, man, you know, if we went to some of these larger tanneries in China, we could like bring the price way down on some of these. We could probably sell these for, you know, like in the high 300s if we were using Chinese leather. And he straight up told me that he refused to do that. He wasn't interested in that. He only wanted to use Horween, Stead, Merriam, like these kinds of leathers. That's what he's interested in doing. He is very, very product focused. He's very dedicated to, you know, making things that are extremely high quality, that are, you know, he, he's part of this movement that's trying to change the perception of what Chinese made goods are and what Chinese made shoes can be. And, you know, I think he's, he's finding his voice in terms of design, in terms of, you know, communicating his perspective on what these things should be. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously pretty bullish on it. I, you know, I got a couple pairs of these things and it was like, I'm in man, let's, let's do it. I'll help you import the stuff. I'll help you with the design. I'll help you with the marketing. And um, I'm stoked, man. I, I've been wearing these for the last couple of months, like pretty uh, extensively. I mean, not this pair, which right. is obviously uh, brand new, but um, I'm doing the Thunderdome in a pair of Color 8 Chrome XL, the same boot. And uh, I've just been loving them, man. They're great. I mean, he's using really choice cuts of Chrome XL. The clicking's really good. And the finishing is super impressive. So I've had, I've handled like a couple dozen pairs at this point. They've all been super clean. Um, and so that's that's what he's trying to do going forward. So yeah, so we'll, what we're gonna do is xbxsboots.com, which like, you can make that appear right here. I can. That's cool. Um, well done on that. <laughs> and you can, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a regular website, Shopify website, hosted in the US. You just go on there and, you know, purchase them. They'll ship from New Jersey, um, which is, uh, again, the greatest place on earth. Mm. So, teacher approved xbxboots.com, xbxs or xs? I tried to get him to change the name, I know, and he was like, no, this is my name, this is what I'm doing. And yeah. Let's see the next, the next pair of boots. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, what do you got for us? All right, next up, out of, we're moving a little, just a short little hop over from Dongguan to Guangzhou. This is the Guangzhou one. All right. Iron the, the boots. The third biggest city in, in China after Shanghai and Beijing. It is a huge city. Yeah, so probably is, a good 15 million people. Uh, I think it's like 15 million yeah. people. Right on, dude. You know your, uh, you know your China yeah, facts there. Yeah, on the ground, yeah. You, um, yeah, so these guys, Iron Boots, um, another one where, you know, was kind of aware of them for a couple of years. They had like one stockist in Japan. They were, you know, pretty popular in Japan. And, um, you know, suddenly this account pops up on Instagram, Iron Boots USA, right? And I'm like, oh, what's this all about? Yeah, they have USA in the title. Well, that is because that is their U.S.-based uh, agent, who is this guy Chang. He lives out in uh, the Bay Area. Super nice dude. He is my buddy. We are the exact same age, and we both just started playing basketball again. So that's all you need to know, right? <laughs> and <laughs> so I start talking to this guy. I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's your deal? He's like, I am, you know, the U.S. agent for these guys. I'm a guy. I love boots. I'm super passionate about it. I found these iron boots. I think it's you know, one of the best boots that you can get. I want to change this perception about Chinese made boots. Mm. This guy, Kai, who runs Iron Boots, has the same vision, has the same That's view. That's the one in China. He's the guy in China running the workshop, designer. Um, I believe his nickname is The Artist. Uh, he likes to make films on the side. So like, you know, there's like a through thread of, you know, anybody who kind of makes these things, it's like mm. a little bit art artsy, right? Like, I feel like the background for a lot of people who are into this is like, well, I was, you know, kind of artistically inclined and then, you know, yeah, fell in love with making these boots. So this guy, Kai, I, you know, I think he is one of the world's like undiscovered geniuses. He 
is so passionate about this. His development process is exacting. He puts so much time, so much effort into getting just every little last detail absolutely correct on these boots. I ordered this pair of Devil Dogs. It's Merriam uh, horse hide that he's hand dyed. So, you know, he, he buys in all this uh, natural undyed leather from Merriam, this horse front, and then he'll hand dye it in whatever color he wants. And he's very specific and very exacting and very, um, you know, he, he, he puts a lot of thought into how this dye is gonna take and all this kind of stuff. Um, and so I was like, this guy's level of detail is like next level. This is like, it's a double row stitch down boot, but fully hand sewn. So mm -hmm. like they're hand lasting, uh, hand sewing the outsoles, literally everything except for, you know, the upper stitching is done by hand. Um, and you know, with that, you get a, a very flexible, you get a very light boot, right? You can feel that it's not mm. super heavy, right? Yeah. But it's very strong, right? And he is using, instead of a cork filler, he's using wool. So that wow. also lowers the weight. The wool, I love wool. Um, I've had like multiple podcast rants where I just talk about how much I love wool. Wool is one of the best materials in the world. It's like the New Jersey of materials. It, it is very good. I've never heard of it in an inside a boot. I've had it on the on the outer of a boot, the upper of a boot. But uh, yeah, well, you know, wool naturally wicks moisture. Yeah, right. It's naturally, really thick it naturally insult. insulates. Yeah. Well, when you're doing stuff by hand, you gotta you know you gotta give yourself some room, right? So <laughs> you you kind of have to use a really thick you know thick insole, and you know, but he that's something he's also you know put a ton of research and, and development into to find the exact you know the exact width of that that's gonna be thick, but not take a long time to break in. Like this is a mm. boot that basically, as soon as you put it on, it's already broken in. Um, this is, th these builds are some of my favorite boot builds anywhere. Wow. Um, and so I got to talking to this guy and I got these boots and I love them. And um, I had been uh, working with my buddy Lars, who is Osmo Boots. Mm. Uh, he's a Norwegian guy, he is a hermit, he lives at the end of a fjord. He looks exactly like what you want him to look like. He's got a big red beard. Yeah, I've seen him um, on Reddit. You, um, there's a photo of me and him in a rowboat together wearing matching sweaters that I'm assuming you're gonna put up on the screen now. And, because um, I will send it to you. But, uh, so, I had, so I went over to Norway like three years ago and he was like, look man, I got this thing. I make these boots by myself. I kind of don't really want the headache of running a brand or you know do, doing a lot of the stuff I can't really do that I can really just make these things and I can only make a couple of them a month I'm not really making a ton of money doing this I was super passionate about it but there's you know it's just not like really the financials don't really make any sense right and so that sent me on this journey to look around and find someone who could make his designs and you know we felt really strongly that you know, we could have gone to Spain and just found a factory to make them good or welted on, uh, you know, just have it be a machine factory boot that you could sell for 350 bucks or whatever. And we kind of decided that wasn't really the right approach because what makes his stuff special is it's made by hand. It's made double row stitch down. It's, you know, based on these vintage Norwegian military boots that he's finding at thrift stores or, you know, wherever you find stuff in, in Norway. Um, just in right? trolls from trolls are yeah. giving it to them. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and so I looked all around. It was like, you know, I spent years calling factories, I, you know, just hitting dead ends. People who, you know, w either wouldn't talk to me unless I had like a half million dollars to spend on it or, you know, people who just couldn't do what I was asking. And finally these Iron Boots guys popped up and I was like, you know, and, and Chang is telling me all about Kai, and I'm like, it's like he's describing Lars. They're like the same guy, mm. except one guy lives at the end of a fjord in Norway, and one guy lives in a city with 15 million people in China, <laughs> and has like five or six other dudes working at his workshop to, you know, produce a, a greater volume of boots. And so we started talking about it, and we said, you know, are you interested in a collaboration where, you know, Lars sends over the last that he's developed, the patterns that he has worked on um, for the last few years, and, you know, try to take that and put it on the Iron Boots build, you know, and combine these two things to make something that could be really interesting and, and you know, would appeal to the people that are interested in Lars's work, right? Not just 
stylistically, but you know, interested in that approach, interested in that ethos, interested in, you know, in the in the soul of what he's doing. And we feel like we've accomplished that because, you know, I <laughs> I'm in like a, a WeChat with these guys. So WeChat is like, it's like Chinese yeah. WhatsApp, right? And I will sometimes wake up and there will just be hundreds of messages between Lars and Kai that is about like, what if we, you know, moving one of these, you know, moving something a millimeter and, you know, and, and like, they're just, they're nerding out over all the details of, 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 of these boots. And I'm like, this is gold. They are so in tune with each other. And then you have Chang and I here in the United States trying to put it all together and make these things happen and get leather there and um, and some of the people. So we are kind of doing periodic drops like as we have leather available. Um, and so they're going to be available on uh, ironbootsusa.com and which there it is. There it is. Still taking uh, MTO orders. So if you have you want to do something MTO, they have a lot of leathers available and you can do that. And um, they just launched a new uh, service boot style, the chosen one, which I was mm. telling you about. And you know, the result of putting that much work into something is that the result is great. And they look excellent. I have a pair on order that I'm waiting for. Maybe I'll have them by the time this video airs, I don't know. Um, but it's been really enjoyable to work with them. And um, you know, through the core of it is this belief that you know, it doesn't matter where where you're from. It's, you know, it's the soul that you're putting into the work and that's what matters. And, you know, both Chang and Kai and, and Lars and I are, you know, we're all in agreement that, you know, things made in China can be, you know, some of the best in the world. So that's, uh, that's why we, that's why we teamed up with them. That's why we, you know, we believe in them. So that would have been a great place to end the video, but we have one more brand to look at. We so sure do. The last one we'll talk about has one of my favorite names for a boot brand, and that is Flame Panda. Oh yeah, Flame Panda. Flame Panda, just the name itself, perfect. It's right? great, it's, it's Chinese, but it's, but it's cool and powerful, mysterious and wooden, and um, rustic is a good word for it, it brings to mind, but also fiery dragons of yore. Flame Panda, so I, despite being in a, <laughs> in the unbelievably niche world of boot media, uh, like, like Ticho here. I'm not as steeped in, uh, in these micro brands, but I, I, even I uh, have been aware of Flame Panda for a long time. Yeah. He's uh, like in central China, isn't he? He's, uh, I forget the name of the city, I'm blanking on that. But yeah, he is in a, a kind of, just, he explained to me where it was, and it, it's kind of in the middle, more in the, more out in the middle of nowhere, but still a city of like 10 million people. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, like he was like, I'm from this like small town. Uh, somebody actually sent me a link to his Instagram. It's like at flamepanda11. And I was like, okay, this guy is, is obviously for real. He's, you know, making really nice. He has his own, you know, his own unique style, his own unique takes on a lot of these boots. And I hit him up, ordered a, pa ordered a pair, this pair, um, basically said, make me, you know, make me a boondocker, right? It's a classic, you know, very, very common style. I, that's kind of my challenge often to new new brands is to say, make me a boondocker because there's not a lot of bells and whistles on it. You have to execute it well. That's the key. So he sends me these things. It is, first of all, the heaviest boot that I own. It is heavy. They weigh a ton. <laughs> and part of the reason that they weigh so much is uh, he he clicked these, like he went and he was like, look, I took, the, took out a Chrome XL hide from Horween and I went right along the back, right? So right along the back of the hide, right? Close to the spine is the densest mm. uh, portion, right? So it's like kind of like some, uh, one of the choicer cuts of, of like a Chrome XL. Sure. Which you traditionally wouldn't want to use for a rough out because you don't really need to, right? You want to use, you want to use the nice, you know, have the nice tight grain, put that on the outside of a boot so people can experience that, enjoy that. Mm. Um, he went the other way with it and flipped it around out, you know, to the rough outside, but it is so thick and so dense. It's like a one year wait for his stuff right now. Yeah. You know, he sells, you know, Horwin, Horwin shell Cordovan boots, I think are like 1800 bucks. Like he is the real deal. If you get a boot from Pang, you are getting one of the best made boots, you know, anywhere. Yeah. Um, he, he himself is also 
a wonderful guy. On Instagram, he's always posting like, going to the noodle shop that's been open for 500 years in his town. <laughs> and like, you know, just here's, I'm gonna go garden and whatever. And he is such a cool guy. I recommend uh, our buddy Jake, Almost Vintage Style, did an interview with Pang and it like completely made me fall. I already love this guy. Yeah. You will completely fall, if you wanna fall in love with a guy who makes boots and his outlook on this whole thing, it is a beautiful interview. Definitely. I highly recommend doing that. Can we yeah, put a yeah, link of that? There it is. There's it's, a it's link. In the description below. Jake is like, a, I, I, I like him a lot. It's very expensive to import leather from the US mm -hmm. and they love, you know, they really want to use the best materials. That's such a guiding principle. And you know, we've seen that with the Indonesian guys too, right? It mm -hmm. started out, it was a lot of the local stuff. It was, you know, and now they are, you know, doing Shell, doing Chinky, doing Merriam, doing all that stuff. Well, that's what these guys are doing too. And they, um, you know, unfortunately have to pay kind of a premium for that. Um, and that actually kind of inflates the cost of the boots even more. So, you know, I think if it wasn't for stuff like that, kind of maybe some political stuff about the tariffs uh, that I don't know enough about to comment on, but, mm -hmm. Um, you know, these could be an even more insane value. Yeah, it's, it's upsetting, isn't it? Because like, there's there's so many bonuses, like uh, something being made in China that would normally, if the leather could just like appear there at the cost that it would be in the US, the boots would be you know, probably hundreds of dollars cheaper. But unfortunately, the the, the importing um, it, it dramatically increases the, the the cost of it. So even though the cost still now is a lot less than it would be uh, were it made in America. It could just be so much less if it went for those import fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, and we've and it seems so crazy to bring it from America out to China then back to America. <laughs> it adds so much to it. But yeah. even then, it's still cheaper than it would be if it were made in America. So uh, that's definitely worth checking out. Well, I mean, I hope, I hope that uh, Pan continues to scale uh, the business as much as he can, um, keeping out in Flame Panda. You had a couple other brands. We didn't have them here, but there are some other brands you've been keeping an eye on. That's right. So you know, I. I'm just constantly looking for like new weird little micro brands that are popping up. Like that's really interesting to me. I've obviously found some really good ones that way. And so that, that's something I like to, um, you know, always be on the lookout for. So I've been talking to this guy, um, uh, he's at Bootgazer uh, mm -hmm. on Instagram. Uh, I'm going like that so you know to put it there. <laughs> okay, um, there it is. So this guy, his name's Peter, he's a super nice guy. He's from Canada, uh, but lives in Beijing and he like, because he lives there, he can go around and like check all these places out, which is really cool and I appreciate it. Um, he like sends me pictures from the workshops and stuff like that. So he's been going to this place, it's WM Beijing. Mm -hmm. I think it's like WM Beijing 1978 on Instagram. I'll check that before I leave. Yeah, um, And it's like, you know, same kind of deal where it's probably more similar to Flame Panda where it's like a small workshop, everything's by hand and the designs are, are unique. Their finishing is excellent. They're doing a lot, you know, it's all handwork, right? Like when you, when you talk about handmade shoes, right? There's kind of the buzzword of it's a handmade shoe, you yeah. know? And it's like, well, was it made by a hand running it through a machine or was it made by somebody taking it all and literally hand welting this, right? It's, you know, there's, that can mean a lot of stuff. Yeah. Most of these places, you know, are truly by hand, right? They don't have the, the capital to buy a lot of machines. They don't have the capital to, you know, um, expedite their processes that have laser cutters or, you know, uh, rapid stitchers, stuff like that. So yeah. it's all happening by hand. And so WM Beijing is a great one. Um, I have a, a pair coming from them that I'm really excited about. Um, and Peter, Peter's photos of them, of their stuff has been just incredible. Yeah. Um, and then there's also King's Boots, which I love, you know, I love a good name, right? <laughs> like I love Flame Panda, I love, you know, Iron Boots, right? Like very yeah. evocative names. Uh -huh. King's Boots, right? Like these are the boots that if you were the king, this is what you would want to wear, right? And um, so another, another guy who I have challenged to make me a boondocker and say, you know, what can you do? Show me your execution. And I'm super excited about them too. It looks really good. And, um, you know, so you can check those guys out. You'll put their Instagrams here. Yeah, yeah. And you'll Actually, scroll through it. Or I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a. There's an article in the description below as well, which is kind of wrapping up everything that we've said here. If you'd uh, rather read it at your own pace, and uh, with links to all these brands and all the places you can uh, you can buy them or learn more about them if you want to just peruse their content. Chinese boots. Um, all right. Well, that does it for our video. Uh, I hope to have 
improved your perception of Chinese made bricks because uh, really passion and uh, soul and skill and craftsmanship knows no borders and uh, you can reach just uh, globally elite levels of uh, skill anywhere in the world and there are definitely and, and honestly when there's a country that has one and a half billion people you know you're honestly more likely to find very skilled people there than yeah. in like a country of like i don't know like 25 million people like australia <laughs> you know what i mean like when there's that many people you, yeah. you actually when you think about the math you, the, there's going to be more incredibly skilled in the high level of skill in these, uh, in these yeah. areas yeah if right? you if you guys could teach like emus how to uh how to like make really high quality boots you might have something there yeah yeah it's true um one of my favorite things about Australia is that you once lost a war to emus. Yeah, that's I a thought, great. I uh, thought that was coming. That's yeah. a great. Yeah, of course it was. I know. I'd of love course. to break out vengeance and have more emu leather boot. Um, follow my Instagram. His title is on the screen. Everything's on the screen. The screen knows all. The, the screen, screen has everything. all the information. The screen is brilliant. Uh, if you are interested in trying to buy any of this stuff, just shoot me a DM on Instagram. I love helping people buy boots. It is like one of my favorite things to do. I will get on the phone with you. I will talk to you about your feet. Uh, if you're gonna send me a picture of your feet, wear socks. I don't want to see your feet. Mm. But other than that, I'm here to help. I love, love, love this stuff. I'm so in into it. And I just want to talk to people with boots all day, so. Great, let's end this video. Bye everybody, subscribe, see you later.